How's it going, everybody? I'm back. I'm back in the friendly confines. I'm at my workstation. I'm where I want to be. Spent six hours on a plane this morning, a couple hours in transit either way from the hotel to the airport and the airport back to my house. But I'm here and I'm ready to go over the weekend recap. We did this last year uh, as an ESPN podcast where I'd go through Best Buys, I'd go through my article from the week, uh, look at what I got right and what I got wrong, and kind of examine the process for every one of those steps. Like, was I. You know, if I was right, was I right because the volume was there that we expected and the game played out the way we expected? Or when I was wrong, was I wrong because the volume went somewhere else or was I just, you know, were we just unlucky with that pick? You know, uh, and there was a couple of those from either side this week and and nobody's ever going to nail 100% of it. Uh, I did like the way that my cash games worked out. We'll go over that before. You can kind of see it right over there. If you're new to the stream, welcome. Glad that you guys are here. Click that follow button. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook after, give me those reactions. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe to the channel. Like the Facebook page as well. Really appreciate that. Got a couple of new members. D Dameron4444, Wolfcastle33, and Jspanin99 before I went live today. Welcome to all three of you to the VIP. Welcome to the Two Comma Club. Let's get into this real quick. Go pull up the article. This is my article on ESPN. Okay, the ESPN Insider Top Daily Fantasy Football Values for Week 1, otherwise known as Best Buys. Started off with Marcus Mariota. And I'll go to the big screen if that's uh, easier for you guys to see. Because this is an insider piece, and obviously, uh, at this point, it's expired. I mean, it's still behind the paywall, but I'm going to do it on stream until they tell me not to because there's no actionable information anymore in this article. And hopefully, if you like the content in it, you'll buy it for future weeks. So Marcus Mariota, uh, I had him pegged as one of my best buys, my high dollar one. I like to go a high dollar play, a mid-range play, and a really cheap play. This week at quarterback, I went with two cheap plays because I like to spend down there anyway. Mariota, 25 of 41, 256 yards, no touchdowns through the air, which was completely strange, but one rushing, giving him 18.84 DraftKings points. Pretty solid output there, not uh, against... Any of that, look, if you end up with 18 points at your quarterback, it's fine. You're not strangling. You're not dying. You didn't get under 10. Uh, the next quarterback is one that I ended up using in my cash game lineup, Carson Wentz. You can read what's behind it there. Uh, 26 of 39 for 307 yards in the bonus on DraftKings with two touchdowns, 23.88. Uh, I said he was going to be my favorite one. He's going to be the highest on QB in double ups and 50-50s. He most surely was, and he came through. Third quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser. This was me a little bit going on a limb, apparently. I didn't think that he had to really achieve all that much to reach value. He only really needed 14 points for us to reach value. He ended up with 19.58, a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. He also had a pick. That's going to happen. When you draft a rookie quarterback, you're going to get that. And the pick was a bad one. He just stared down, uh, what was it, J.J. Watt? Just stared him down. And then, or TJ Watt stared him down instead of looking at the slot guy who was wide open. Just stared down his receiver, did not even pay attention to the defensive end that dropped back into to, uh, the coverage there. 222 yards for the air and 20 of 30. Looks like he belongs. He can make big throws. He can also make some plays with his legs. Obviously smashed value. Uh, and this was just a really weird week because as people in the chat are saying, Joey Mojoy, every game was a letdown. Nobody scored touchdowns. The only round one ADP player that scored a touchdown on the week of the top 12 in the league was like... Freeman, right? He was the only guy. Uh, intriguing for tournaments, Russ Wilson, Kirk Cousins, both were bleh. Uh, we nailed the three main core guys. That's the most important thing to me. The tournament guys, I'm taking flyers on. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, obviously the biggest disappointment for most people, but kind of mitigated by the fact that no running backs really had a big game, right? So, I mean, you'll see how this kind of cost me uh, in my cash game out of the fact that if he just has his average day, and he was like 30% owned in the high dollar 50-50s, uh, which we're going to look at. So high stakes cash. Uh, six carries, 20 yards, no targets, no touchdowns, obviously. 7.7 7 points. Ridiculous. Uh, just ridiculous cross board. And it was the game plan from the Steelers. I don't know if it was to keep the ball out of his hands for mitigating injury risk. But like, 
they just they were upside down and backwards. Maybe it was a little bit because of the Browns were solid. He had three carries for three yards, but it's not like they were giving the ball to the backup. They just weren't running the ball, which is a, an odd strategy going into a division opponent game, first of two, uh, with what they had. Second guy, Gurley, the highest performing running back on the day, although he got there in kind of a weird way. 19 carries, 40 yards. Five catches on six targets. That's really positive moving forward for Gurley. 56 yards. Yard, so 96 yards from scrimmage on the day for Gurley. One touchdown, 20.6 points. I'll call that a positive, especially for 6K. Carlos Hyde, six of six in the passing game. Six catches on six targets for 32 yards. Nine of 45 on the ground. Alan Phillips, welcome back to the VIP. Three straight months, one of the OGs on the channel. Get the Smiz lights in the chat for him. Uh, I'll answer questions a little bit. Do I think Bell will get more of his normal amount of touches in week two? I always expect. I expected it in week one. Uh, so I'm not going to not expect it moving forward. So uh, we'll deal with that as we get later in the week. I, I'm going over my process from the week before, and then I'll work forward as the week moves on when I get to Best Buys and podcasts and everything else uh, to really narrow, narrow down where I'm at for the Friday question and answer uh so we'll be ready to go for that so carlos Hyde, 13.7 points at 4.6 k you're you're doing fine for cash games there intriguing for tournaments david johnson christian mccaffrey uh apparently everybody thought that i was overweight on the touches that i was projecting for christian mccaffrey somebody went as far on twitter as to say if you're projecting over 12 touches for him you're projecting wrong i said 15 to 18 he had 18 guys you know and out snapped stewart almost you know one and a half to one uh, he's going to be a beast in this offense and second, third most targets of all time for a rookie in his first game, rookie running back in his first game at the NFL level. Isaiah Crowell, uh, they played from behind, but that's why he's a tournament play there. AJ Green, here, the wide receivers were odd, zero touchdowns for any of my wide receivers here. AJ Green, no touchdowns, five catches, but 10 targets because Dalton just stunk it all up, right? He just was terrible. So 12.4 points for AJ Green, not anywhere near enough, but I mean, Dalton couldn't have been any worse and he still fired 10 targets at AJ Green, over 30% market share. That's what we were going after. Uh, and because of the turnovers, they just couldn't keep get anything going or keep anything going. Uh, I think the process was fine. We're a little bit unlucky there. Doug Baldwin, uh, you know, this was the price range that I loved, right? I was saying all week 5K to, to 6,500 at wide receiver and then 4K and down. Four catches on four targets for 63 yards. They just did not utilize him as much as they typically utilize him. Like I was expecting eight targets. I don't know if they were shocked by what the Packers were doing. I, I think it's a little bit of process here. The Packers offensive line looked worse than it did in years past. Uh, somebody posted a picture and said, this is fine with like Russ in the pocket with four and not on a screenplay, like four linemen running at him and his offensive lineman on the other side of him. Like they just could not stay in front of anybody. Uh, obviously it's a timing offense and that disrupted that. So a little bit of process there. I'm going to have to adjust moving forward with Seattle's offense. Uh, although this week may not be a problem. Look at their opponent and Larry Fitzgerald. The guy we thought would have the easiest path, the least path of, you know, the path of least resistance. He did drop what should have been a touchdown. He had 13 targets against an opponent that allowed like 70, 80 percent of targets to the slot to be completed last year. HB cards three months in a row. Thank you very much for the support of the channel. Appreciate that as well. 13 targets, six catches, 74 yards. If he just catches that one touchdown, it's seven for 85 or, or 90 with a touchdown, and we're not complaining, but 13.4 points, not terrible at all. Amari Cooper caught a touchdown, wasted three other red zone targets, but got like 40% of the market share. Going to be interesting to watch moving forward if he's going to keep getting that sort of supply. He's somebody that should be probably priced at 8,500 or above. Uh, so he does look like he might still be a value uh moving forward until he gets priced up if he still gets that sort of market share of the targets on his team jj nelson actually worked out somebody that i was kind of moving off of by saturday uh saturday afternoon and moving into sunday as we mentioned on the pregame show and paul richardson 3700 uh all viable for tournaments uh one thing i was wrong and guy that i moved to later in the week uh i spoke about this briefly on twitter right was the process was 100% right in saying that everybody's going to be on Ertz. They were. 
80 90 percent in high stakes uh head to head and 50 50 games and uh norman's gonna be locked up on alshon jeffrey also correct he's gonna have to look somewhere else and there's somebody else that's gonna be whoever's on the opposite side was gonna be the beneficiary of extra targets extra work at really cheap uh price at a really cheap buy and give you a lot of leverage against all the earth's ownership i projected that it was going to be tory smith that's where i was wrong it was nelson Aguilar did a fantastic job uh so really liked that play there uh in terms of tight ends kind of nailed these delaney walker seven catches on nine targets for 76 yards uh, no touchdowns, 14.6 points. Zach Ertz, the, the absolute layup, said that he was too too cheap, absolutely mispriced. Eight catches on eight targets, 93 yards, 17.3 points. Uh, Jack Doyle did not enough, but didn't kill you at 3,700. Austin Hooper had a ridiculous day, but only on two, three targets. Turned one into a massive touchdown. Uh, Buffalo Bills defense, nine points. Rams defense, uh, the absolute smash, uh, 28 Points and we're going to keep trying to stack against Tolzien moving forward. So let's take a look at the cash game lineup here, which I have over here. Just so you know, I do host it on my Facebook page. I post it every single week. Facebook.com slash Al Smizzle. It's right here. I post like a discussion about it. We get a little discussion thread going. People can talk about what they did, what you thought was right. I try to get involved where I can and answer your questions there. So all these are right from Best Buys, guys. Just like I say every week for the last two years. My Best Buys column is my core plays that I'm using the most in tournaments and using in cash games. Uh, Carson Wentz, Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, straight out of Best Buys. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Doug Baldwin, Zach Ertz, Rams D, all out of Best Buys. The Biz 32, three months in a row. I love that we've got, like, resubs at this point. We've got the different... Uh, you know, the different things, once we get to six months, I'm going to have to come up with a different animation and song for you guys to, to keep it going. DQ34, like new member of the VIP. Thank you very much for getting involved. Really appreciate you being here. Now, the places I changed from Best Buys, and you can see these were not guys that I was thinking about moving into the week. Kendall Wright, right there. Somebody I was not thinking about early in the week, but it appeared that he was going to be too cheap. Uh, and give me uh, opportunity at somebody who was going to allow me to open up other things uh, for salary considerations. And I thought would get seven, eight targets. He did not get seven, eight targets. He was on the field half the time. Uh, picked it up after Kevin White went out. I went with Crabtree because I wanted exposure to that game. That game was kind of a bust. Crabtree still six catches for 83 yards. And I would assume should have more shares of red zone targets moving forward. But 14 respectable points from him as well. Uh, where I could have gone differently, I could have not gone Baldwin, could have gone LaShawn McCoy with three running backs and then paid down a little bit from Crabtree uh, to have the kind of an optimal lineup. You can see here I came in ninth. There were 93 teams. It was out of 100 uh, in this 50-50. This is the $1,000, the giant 10-60, 50-50. So you've got basically some of the best players in the industry playing in this every single week, three entry max. Uh, so about a 90th percentile lineup. I want about, I didn't count exactly, but I want about 90% uh, of my head to head games. So I like the work that I put in this week, my tournaments, I can do better moving forward. Just like pretty much always, the more information we get, that we can feed in the better projections that we can have and the better we're going to get every week. So, uh, pretty happy with how I did week one, uh, with it being week one and everything up in the air. So thank you guys for joining appreciate it if you're watching on facebook give this a like if you are on youtube subscribe to the channel let's see how many likes that we can get on this video and we'll catch you next time